Hi there! So, you want to know about my electric feeders? And you want to know what's happening with the pick and place machine? Well, I have a story for you. Don't I always? Here's the electric feeder feeding. 0603, 10K, resistors. And it's so much quieter than the pneumatics. Fans for the power supplies for the electric feeders are seriously loud. Now I can solve that quite easily by replacing them with better power supplies or just getting one big uber power supply with better cooling and plugging everything into that but I'm not prepared to spend another cent on this machine so I'm going to live with the noise. But it's like three times louder than the pick and place machine was before the electric feeders. I had to turn the pick and place and the electric feeder power supplies off. It's just too noisy in here to record. So, I spent about seven days working with Charm High after I got the electric feeders. Now, I'm going to try to condense all of this information into a short, succinct video. Good luck with that. <laughs> but I'll try my best. Now, I got the electric feeders, I plugged them all in, they all work great. Well, two of them don't work, 34 of them work great. They feed a thousand times better than the pneumatics do. I'm getting almost zero flipped parts. I have had a few, maybe three or four. Uh, could just be because I've knocked the machine or the feeders. Maybe, I don't know. But the feeding of the parts has vastly improved. And everyone's going to think, yay, awesome. That's solved my problems. Well, no. So what it did was highlighted very specifically that this machine has a problem. Now, before the electric feeders, Charm High were convinced that it was just a feeder issue and that if they swapped the feeders out, I'd have no more problems. I've said from the start that this machine has a lot of problems. I've said that it's got airflow problems. I've said it's got precision problems. It makes weird noises on the Y axis. It doesn't home the same position every time when you turn it on and many other things. And what the electric feeders did was showcase how bad the precision of this machine is because we can't blame the feeders anymore. We can't blame the presenting of an incorrect part anymore as the problem for why the pick and place wasn't placing well. So what I have now is a pick and place machine that even though it's perfectly calibrated per nozzle to the vision system both down and up, it cannot hit a target to both pick up and place a part reliably. If I tell it to pick up the same part from the same feeder 10 times and place it on 10 different locations on a board, I'll get a different result on the pickup and on the placement almost every time. I'm just uh, taking a seat on the pick and place machine, just to get a bit more comfortable. So I have to give Charm High a little bit of credit, a little bit, that as soon as they found out that I was still having issues after the electric feeders were put in place, they were quite keen to work with me on trying to work out what the problem was. And it escalated quite quickly from a Friday where I was talking to Kimmy to moving over to WeChat on Saturday to having a one and a half hour video conference call on WeChat on Sunday with some engineers and they were going over my machine with me and they were getting me to do all sorts of stuff, checking all sorts of things, and then a continued conversation on Monday and Tuesday, but it ended up deteriorating again. They were prepared to look at software as a problem, as settings as a problem, my working files as a problem, me as the problem, which we keep going back to, we did look at things like tightness of the belts and some of the couplers. Uh, we checked out the gap that's on the right hand side of the machine. I did make a video and show them that the PCB holder is out of alignment. It's not straight. Never got anything back about that. I did get them to admit that there's a, a sound problem with the machine and they think it could be the Y axis coupler, but I have to stick my head in underneath to fix that. I'm still getting a lot of misfeeds on my pneumatic feeders, the larger feeders on the back of the pick and place machine. I still get parts all over my floor because of misfeeding and again showed them that repeatedly. 
they were prepared to look at anything on the machine other than the machine itself. So it got to a point where I said to them, hey, what's the deal? Like, it keeps revolving back to something I'm doing wrong, but at no point have we discussed the electronics in the machine, the driver boards, the motor drivers, the firmware for the motor drivers. What about the air system inside the machine? Maybe there's a problem with the regulators or the airflow or the cabling. Maybe there's an earth leakage problem inside the machine. I mean, there could be so many other things with this machine that are causing the problem, but they just weren't prepared to look at it. At one point, they did offer to send me a brand new driver board and some motor drivers and a whole bunch of stuff. And I gladly accepted and then very quickly changed my mind. Why? Well, I paid full price for a pick and place machine and now I have to pull the whole machine apart and I have to put new things in and troubleshoot the internal electronics of the machine. I mean, it's a mess inside here. It really is. So I don't want to have to deal with that. I don't want to be responsible for making the machine worse by trying to navigate the mess that's in here and replace a whole bunch of boards that I have no expertise on and then have Charm High blame me when the machine doesn't work anymore. So, hey, you know, not like they're paying me a wage to fix their machine for them. That's their responsibility. Okay, the pick and place machine is not comfortable to sit on. I'm now on my carpet on the floor. So let's cut to the chase. There's two main issues with the machine. The first one is there's just this offset that happens on some of the nozzles where it can't reliably hit a place to put the part down and it's always offset to like the left and up or to the right and down. And it's fairly consistent when it happens. It either nails it or there's an offset, but it's not random. The other thing is there's just this randomization where it can't, as I said, reliably hit the same pickup position every time and same placement position every time. And so both of those cause me to have to nudge the parts back on and if the movement is too much, it schmears the paste, okay? It's no different to what I was experiencing before. Uh, with the electric feeders, I just don't have to flip as many parts now, so that's great. Now, the only thing that Charm High could come up with to fix this was I needed to run the machine at 50% speed. I needed to slow down how fast it moved down and up to pick up parts. I needed to hold on the part before I picked it up, for like 0.5 of a second, and then hold on the part as I was placing, what they call mounting, for half a second or more before I let go of it. Now, I was already doing a lot of that stuff on the larger parts anyway. I wasn't running it at 50%. But, here's the kicker. They said I'm only able to use one head at a time. So I can only pick up one part at a time and place it. I've got a four head machine, but I can't pick up four parts and then place four parts. So the travel time between the feeders and the board is the part that takes the longest. So my Feather S2, for instance, has 89 parts on it and I've got eight boards on a panel. 700 odd parts I need to pick in place and I have to do it at half speed one part at a time That's like way slower like four or five hundred components per hour slower than my old charm high and I tried it and guess what? It really didn't help much. Maybe a little bit a little tiny bit with the randomness didn't fix the offset so the way I've solved this if you want to call it solving is I painstakingly kept repeatedly making my nano boards, trying to work out what was a random offset and what was a repeatable offset. And for everything that I thought was repeatable, I would go to the camera, the position of the camera and the nozzle, and if, for instance, if the part was being put too far forward and to the left, even though the crosshair said put in the middle, I would then shift the nozzle in the camera a little bit back into the right to compensate. <laughs> so I had to move it off center to hope that when it grabbed it and placed it, it would put it in the middle. I mean, come on, how unreliable is that? That only works for my nanos. If I want to put my Feather S2 on and do those, I have to redo all that again to work out where the offsets are again. So it, look, it's a terrible situation with the machine. But 
I'm going to stick with it for now. Do I want a new pick and place machine? Absolutely. Do I want to get a new Neoden N8? For sure, I really do. But I've decided that I'm not going to buy another pick and place machine until I've physically seen it running. I'm not prepared to buy a machine based on marketing specs anymore, based on what the supplier tells me it can do. Even though I've got a great relationship with Neoden and they were the ones that wouldn't sell me an N8 until now because they didn't think it was good enough for me yet, I'm still not prepared to spend that type of money on a machine until I've seen one running in real life and can confirm for myself that it'll actually do what I want it to do. Because what I don't want to do is buy a pick and place machine and then get it and then find out that the only way I can make it do my boards is to run it at a quarter speed. Yeah, so where does that leave things with Charm High? Well, it all kind of ended when I said to them, after going through all of this, how do we fix it, all these different things we were trying to do, I said to them, does my machine match your expectation of the 560p4? And they wouldn't reply. They wouldn't answer. I asked them for several days and I said to them, until you can answer that question, I can't work with you on this. We have no path forward. I need to know, is my machine working as well as your expectation for this machine? And they wouldn't answer. Now it's pretty obvious why they wouldn't answer. Because if they said, no, it isn't working to our expectation, that means my machine's faulty. And if they say, yes, it is working to our expectation, then they sold me a machine that isn't capable of doing what they told me it can do and what their marketing says it can do. So they're in a bind. I get that. But if they're not prepared to say one way or another what they think the machine is doing, I don't have a path forward. So am I pulling my videos down? Probably not. I might take a couple of the really ranty streams I did that were just dedicated to Charm High. I might take those down, but am I going to take down the videos showcasing the machine and what it can do? No, I'm not. Am I going to make more videos about this machine and its inadequacies? No. I'm moving on. I need to move on. I said that on my last video. I'm going to get back onto making projects. I will suffer through using this machine because I don't have a choice because there are some boards like my Nanos I just cannot do by hand. There are too many boards on the panel, there are 20 boards on the panel, and I cannot place all the parts in time before the paste expires. So I'm going to keep using this machine where I can. I'm going to keep assembling by hand. During the whole five days or six days I was dealing with Charm High, I actually hand built 24 Reflow Masters <laughs> because, you know, it's more reliable for me to do it by hand, and I'm going to continue working both ways. So thank you all for sticking with me on this journey. This is the end, this is the wrap up, okay? The machine's staying for now. I will replace it in the future, but only when I can actually see what I'm buying before I buy it. And will I be working with Charm High in the future on this? I doubt it, unless they come back to me with an answer. There's no more communication there. Have the electric fitters made a difference? They have, they've made a difference to flipped parts, but they haven't made a difference to the reliability of the machine. And that's pretty much what I expected. And it's pretty much why I told them at the start that I didn't want the electric feeders. I wanted a refund because I was convinced then the electric feeders weren't going to solve the problem. And now I have proof that the electric feeders aren't going to solve the problem. Thank you for watching. Thanks for coming along on the journey. As I said, if you're new here, please subscribe. Click the alarm bell to be notified when I've got new videos coming out. To my patrons, both present and previous, Hi, you're awesome. Thank you for all your support. And yeah, I will maybe catch you all on MakerCast. So on Stephen Hawes' channel, link is in the description below. Monday morning for me, Sunday evening for pretty much everyone else. Okay, catch you later. Bye.